Hello and welcome. I'm Captain David Campbell. I'm the Strategic Communications Chairman for the Alpa Pilots at Alaska Airlines. What you see behind me here are many of my fellow pilots who on a day off made a point to come out and join an informational picket. There's about 700 of us here in Seattle um, and we're also joined by other members of the work groups of Alaska Airlines, other pilots from other pilot groups as well. The Alaska pilots have been in a contract negotiation with management for nearly three years and in all of that time management has not made meaningful progress to address the concerns of the pilots and we are here today to tell them that three years is too long it is time for a new contract what you see here is happening in all of our bases so from anchorage alaska portland oregon san francisco california los angeles california and then of course here in seattle we're going to go live to each of those bases and see what's happening in there beginning with alaska with uh, Bobby Lane. Hi, Bobby. Hey, How's it David, going? How are you? Good. How are you today? Good. It's great to see you. Uh, Bobby Lane is the vice chairman of the local executive council in Anchorage. And Bobby, let's start talking about some of the things that are of concern to our pilots. And for example, trusting that one's job will be safe and secure has been on the minds of all of our pilots, but I know that's a, of a particular concern to the pilots that you represent up in Anchorage. Can you speak to that a bit? Well, it is hitting a little close to home. We're seeing uh, routes that have always been flown by Alaska Airlines pilots that uh, are living in the state of Alaska are now being flown by other companies and other pilots based in other states. So it's really coming to fruition on uh, where we're at today. Well, and, you know, Bobby, some people will say, we've heard this from management, that any kind of job security like that will inhibit the company's ability to grow. What do you say to that? No, I'll make two points in response to that. First, growth is a good thing. We want the company to grow. We have crafted our proposals to fit our company stated business model and growth plan. We don't want to get in the way of that. We just don't want to be left behind. Secondly, Great. similar scope provisions that exist at nearly every other major carrier here today. And we're asking for industry standard and all the other airlines with similar scope provisions seem to be able to handle the growth there just fine. Yeah, exactly. We're not creating something out of thin air. We're not asking the company to adopt anything that hasn't been tested and tried at other carriers. So it, it really ought to be easy to uh, get to an agreement. I, why it's taken three years is, is very frustrating. Well, yeah, I see your point here. Yeah. So, Bobby. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, but we, we're lucky to have, we have over 50 guys sitting here at Anchorage International Airport holding picket signs today, representing, looking to get an industry standard co contract through. That's great. And what was the mood in the air of the, the rally that, that we just had up in Anchorage? Well, I think there's positive outlook. The, the pilots are ready for it. We've worked hard for it. We've been waiting. We've been patient. Now it's time that we deserve it. So let's get this thing done. That's great. You mentioned about 50 pilots. That sounds like easily a third of your base up there, right? A little bit over a third, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, let's head down now a little bit further south to Portland, where Rob Cloft is the LEC chairman. Hi, Rob. Hello, Good to David. see you. Hi. Hi. So how's it going down in Portland for you, you and your pilots? Uh, it's, it's going good. It's been a great morning so far in our rally and uh, the, the pilots are excited to be here. That's great. Um, Rob, perhaps, you know, another thing that's of great concern to our pilots is scheduling flexibility. And what kind of changes do you think would be required out of the reserve system to improve the quality of life for not just our pilots, but for their families that they come back to? Well, what we, really are talking about is increasing quality of life, being able to plan and attend events that are important to the pilots. Things like longer call out times, shorter reserve periods, and more days off. But it is more than that. Uh, I would say the pilots want to be able to plan and be reasonably sure that they will not be assigned into a day off or worse, into a vacation day. 
right? And it, just like I mentioned with Bobby, these are provisions that our carriers, our, our fellow pilots at other carriers enjoy already, right? Yes, I would agree. Yeah. So, Rob, one of the things our listeners may not be aware of is how much work our union did and, and how much sacrifices our pilots made to help our company weather the storm of the pandemic. Could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so Alaska pilots were committed to ensure our airline emerged through this pandemic successfully. We made significant contributions to keep our airline operating during these times. It was Alpa pilots that showed the company that there was an alternative way to furloughing pilots. Our pilots took early retirements, they took leaves, and they accepted reduced hours of work. Also, we helped lobby Congress to pass the Payroll Protection Act. These actions help uh, save the company millions while allowing it to re recover as quickly as it has. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. Let's go down now to San Francisco. Arna Harris is the LEC chairman. Hi, Arna. How are you doing? We're good. How are you? I, I'm doing well. So one of the things we've talked about is the, the concern pilots have about job security. And when we say job security, could you summarize what that means to you and the, the pilots down in, in your base? Sure, David. Uh, job security for us means that as the company grows, we want assurances that the mainline pilot ranks grow with it. Um, more importantly, we're key stakeholders in that growth and we want to benefit from it. It's really important that we know that Alaska won't outsource our jobs. Absolutely. That's that's important. We, we want the company to do well. We just want to be a part of it. Um, what are your pilots in uh, San Francisco? What are some of the things that are of big concern to them? You know, a huge concern to these guys is that we used to do over 40 departures per day out of San Francisco with the San Francisco based pilots. That's been reduced to as little as three and we're around 20 right now. That flying that these guys used to do has been replaced by regional aircraft, which is flown by other carriers. So it's again, it's critical that we have assurances that Alaska Airlines will not outsource our jobs. Thanks, thanks, Arna. That's that's helpful. What's the the mood of the pilots like down there? Uh, the rally was absolutely palpable. Excited. These guys are ready to be here. Visibly demonstrate their unity, their resolve. Uh, let Alaska Airlines know that it's way past time to, to come to the table, meaningful contract, break the stall, and, and get us to a, a market-based contract now. That's great. And of, what would you say your turnout is down there of the pilots who are off today? You know, we have about 134 guys here, so we're really close to half of our pilot group. Um, has come in on their days off and, and been willing to sacrifice time at home, time with family to be here, and that's huge. Yeah, well, I mean, it's clear to see how important this is to all of our pilots. This is clearly a grassroots effort from the pilots of Alaska Airlines to lobby their management to finally, as you say, break the stall and, and bring us a contract now. Absolutely, thank, it's time. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Arna. Bet. Let's let's uh, keep going south down to Los Angeles, uh, where we've got Matthew Adams is the LEC vice chairman. Hi, Matthew. Hi, David. How's it going? It's good. Good to see you. So, Matthew, tell us how the improvements to scheduling would impact the lives of not just the pilots, but the pilots' families based in Los Angeles. Well, following on from what Rob said in Portland, pilots need the scheduling flexibility so that they can be a part of their friends' and families' lives. They want to attend their children's birthday parties and their friends' birthdays and big events, and scheduling flexibility would allow them to do that. Also, a large percentage of our pilots commute across the country, and they need to be able to arrange their schedule in such a way that it's productive so that they have a fulfilling family life and a productive work life at the same time. Yeah, thank you. And Matthew, we've been talking a lot about the improvements needed for our contract. I think it's worth pointing out that the solutions we are proposing are reasonable, right? Can you speak yeah. to that? Right, and more to the point, these solutions are already in place at our peer airlines. It's long past time that Alaska Airlines integrated these proven solutions. We need a contract now. Alaska Airlines needs to stop stalling. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 
Yes. They should yeah. be seeking a competitive advantage based on a subpar contract with our pilots. Right. And Matthew, I, I'll, I've asked everyone this, but I'll ask it to you, and I assume the answer already, but what's the mood of your pilots down there? It's been awesome, David. It's been great. There's been a real energy in the air. Everyone's proud to be here and show their unity to each other and show that we all stand behind our demands for our next contract. Okay, that's great. Um, well, thank you very much, Matthew. It was great to hear what's going on in, in Los Angeles. And uh, let's move back to Seattle. Uh, I'm joined here with uh, my colleague, LEC Chairman Captain Tony Lynn. Tony, good to see you. Hey, David. It's great to be here. So uh, let's look at the pilots standing out here. It's really uplifting today, isn't it? You know, it's absolutely amazing. The support for our event today is incredible across the system, as everybody's talked about. And here in Seattle, we have over 700 of our own Seattle pilots. We've got over 100 guest pilots from multiple airlines, as well as over 100 of our own flight attendants out here to support us today. It's absolutely awesome to see. Yeah, it's really, really impressive. What, what do you think is the message that people should take away from what they're seeing out here? You know, we've been bringing the message to the company and today was the pilot's opportunity to send a very, very clear message of how unified we all are in seeking the improvements that everybody's talked about at all the other councils today. The things that we're seeking, like Matthew said, they're standard, they're common amongst our peers and we are years behind the rest of our fellow pilots in the nation and we're ready to move forward with our company. So they need to come to the table again, like Matthew said, and stop stalling negotiations. It's time to come to the table and get a deal done. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Tony. And I'd like to thank you all for watching on, on this streaming. Uh, if you'd like to help us, there are three ways that you can help. Follow us on social media. You can share today's picket. And you can visit us at alaskapilots.org to download a virtual picket sign. Well, again, thank you very much. We appreciate your support, and we appreciate you tuning in. I've been your host, Strategic Communications Chairman, Captain David Campbell.